Okay, well, let's, uh, um, so typically we'd go right, right on to uh, what Rayo said, but uh, we're going to go on to, uh, you know, uh, uh, just a, a different nomad. Uh, this was from Vaughn of the Search for Personal Freedom, uh, March 1968 Innovator, uh, a letter from a nomad. Quote, I am living in Big Tahunga Canyon. Bright sunlight and fresh air stream into my home. A hundred yards away rushes the creek. Beyond rise rugged hills, green with winter grass and budding shrubs. A few more days I will live here, riding, installing some equipment, then move to Los Angeles for a short, intense contract job. Next summer, when Tahunga Canyon is no longer very green and Los Angeles may be hot in more ways than one, I will be living somewhere in Canada. My home is a house car. I chose this way to freedom because it offers me the best of two worlds. I can live most of the time away from regimented, congested, indefensible cities, yet still profit by exporting my labor into these cities. I have the freedom and security offered by mobility, and I possess what is in most respects a permanent residence. I can fully enjoy my life right now, yet live economically and accumulate capital for further ventures. Finally, I can opt out alone. While I look forward to trade with others who may choose similar or complementary ways of life, my liberty does not depend on their decisions. I am also delighted with unforeseen fringe benefits, ease of washing or resting after a journey, no worry about what to take with me, no time spent idle waiting for something or someone, no commuting to work, all travel is more efficient. I move only from destination to destination without intervening trips to a stationary home. Far from having a primitive way of life, I enjoy electric lights, running hot and cold water, shower, gas range, and heater, and all are self-contained, not dependent on external utility connections. With occasional refills of water, gasoline, and propane, I can enjoy my modern conveniences anywhere a rugged truck will take me. At first I was crowded, especially in my rolling voluntary society doubled in population. But after consigning seldom used items to storage, adding under chassis compartments, and carefully rearranging, the interior is neat, belongings are accessible, and space is adequate for two people. Like many other self-liberating activities, mobile living is the safest in the large city or wildest wilderness. Cops have bothered me only twice in four months of living aboard. Both times were in farming areas where, while traveling, I had stopped on unposted private land. Patrolling deputies asked me to move on. I have no problems parking on city streets at night, usually in apartment residential areas. On jobs, I often stay in the company parking lots. Only rarely have I rented space. The backyards of friends when doing work, which immobilizes the truck for several days. This way of life is very economical. My almost new house car, including much gear I have added, has cost under $6,000, a fraction of the price of a comparable yacht or a well-equipped retreat home, not to mention a cracker box in the suburbs. And living expenses for two total about $120 per month, including $55 for food, $20 for gasoline, $10 for maintenance, $10 rental for storage space, and $25 for miscellaneous. So far, I have been too busy to travel extensively or to seek out especially attractive campsites. But already, I have lived many exquisite days and evenings at beaches, mountains, and forests. I am still learning the way of a modern nomad, but already, I am free. End quote. So, I think that's a very good way to start the episode. Did you kind of get the, uh, just a, a, a very good brief introduction of, like, uh, of this guy's experience, uh, which I think is fantastic. And, uh, again, yeah, you didn't make him, you didn't get a, a make him, maker model of his house car. I don't know what he's referring to there. What do you think a house car is, Kyle? Uh, maybe it's an older term for pretty much a motorhome, probably RV type thing. Is yeah, what I'm probably, kind of yeah. speculating. I think as a term may, mainly come from the 50s. I think. Um, what's interesting about this is that it's very, um, it's an almost flowery description in some ways. Although there are some facts in here, when, like when uh, with the mention about uh, the budget, right, right towards the end there. However, I think in some ways. What's more important than the actual words being used is also the subtext. So, I mean, I mean, noticed. Let me put it this way: notice that the guy does not have to pay rent to a landlord for an apartment. He does not have to pay, as many people unfortunately do, in terms of owning uh, houses. Uh, they do not have to pay interest to bankers in the form of a mortgage. Okay, he owns the. Uh, presumably, he owns the uh, the house car, shall we say, free and clear. Okay, it's not a rental, and it's not a rent to own. It's already owned. That, in addition to that, the said house car in question, unlike an apartment, unlike a house, is mobile. So when he was also mentioning about, he doesn't have to worry about uh, what to take with him, uh, such as like in a in a car that you don't live in. Um, you, uh, enjoy the conveniences of, um, like electric lights, running hot and cold water, gas range and heater. Um, that, that's very interesting. So it's like almost like combining 
your uh, your home with with a car, and now you you're you're doing the van nomadism thing, which is kind of I guess one way of putting it, and so kind of trying to combine those things in a mobile setup is even today is really not comfortable for a lot of people, right? They think of the, even the very concept of home within the servile society is very stationary, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Right? As in, as in my home is located at 1234 Main Street, okay? The idea is that it's it's permanently rooted to the earth in some sense, even if it's a, even if it's a, some sort of penthouse in a high rise, it's so rooted, right? You can't move the penthouse, and and so or if it's a or if it's a dingy uh, closet of an apartment in, in the slum, same idea. It's still not mobile even then. Um, so that's that's kind of something interesting. So I, I know some socialists try to do the whole class warfare thing with the ninety nine percent and the one percent and all that. But what I would say is pretty much true for pretty much both of them, which would be virtually a hundred percent. Is is that they think of home as something stationary. They don't think of home as mobile. 